welcome to the MBS show. Yes, it's me, Daniel Anthony, hosting this week. Joining me today is Norman Sanzo. Hello. Yep, Norman, it's been a while since I sat in the host chair. Indeed. And just for the record, it's episode 48. Ah, okay. So, how does it feel to be back in the co-host chair? Easy. I don't need to talk. I just <laughs> sit down and relax. Okay, so this week also joining us is a co-host all the way from the States. Please welcome Five Iron. Hey, what's up? Hi, Five Iron. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. All right. So, um, later on, Five Iron's co-host, I mean, not really co-host, the host of Brony Time will be joining us. His name is uh, Alpha Brony. He may be joining us later on in the episode. But for this week, we also have a guest and his name is Philip Golingai. Hello, hi. So, Philip, how are you this week? Okay, great. It's just that I need more hearts. That's all. <laughs> okay, so um, before we proceed on with the show, we need to ask every guest that comes on four very, very important questions. So, Philip, this is for you. The first question is, I know that you've been watching the show a little bit. Which is your favorite character? Uh, it's uh, Rainbow Dash. Ah, Rainbow Dash. Do you have a reason why? I've, I've been thinking about it. I don't really have a reason, but maybe I just like the way uh, Rainbow Dash looks. Okay, right. Just the, yeah, just the colors, I think. The, yeah. Mm, okay. So, uh, how many episodes have you watched of late? Oops. Uh, maybe two or three. Oh, it's okay, because our second question is, which is your favorite episode? Problem is, I can't remember because I watch it uh, something like very early in the morning, and it's actually my, my four-year-old daughter who's watching it. So... She's trying to sleep and she watched the show, so I, I'm really sleepy and I'm, I'm, she forced me to watch the show, so I'm, <laughs> I'm watching it. So I don't remember which episode. Okay, right. But if you could uh, tell us, you know, maybe um, what was in it, I think we could try and trace it. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see which one I remember. It's something like uh, that is that dragon. Okay. That, that naughty dragon who's like a magician or something. So, so she's she uh he's he's brought alive and then he's they're supposed to turn him into a nice guy. Uh, oh, Discord. Uh, Discord. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's not on. Uh, uh, he's a dragon, isn't it? Um, uh, basically, a mix, yeah. they call him a dragon. Was, a he's a combination of everything. That was yes, last week's yes. episode, episode number ten. That yes. was awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was, very that, that was quite, quite funny. Yeah, it was a great episode. So um the next qu- the next question would be I think um you pretty much talked about it. How did you get into this show? And because you played the game, how did you get into the game in the first place? Okay, uh, I think I got into the game first, then into the show. Okay. Uh, but uh, it's all because of my daughter, actually. I've seen her watch uh, My Little Pony, but I never really bought her. But then the thing is, uh, I have an iPad. And then I think that uh, for the first time, they they had a, a, what you call it, a, an, an apps. Ah, okay. So I downloaded the apps. Actually, the reason I download this uh, My Little Pony apps is just for my daughter. I thought like, wow, since she watched the uh, show, that she will love these apps. But then uh, she was playing it, playing it, but then she was not really that attracted. So then I, I was quite bored one day and then I went in through the apps. And then the funny thing is I found it a bit addic- addictive. So uh-huh. I kind of got stuck with it. And then my daughter never bothered about it. Except for once in a while, she will go and collect uh, uh, little, little gems and those kind of things. But yeah, that's that's the story. Okay. It always happens that way. One day you're <laughs> bored and you play a game and you're hooked. Yeah, true. But, yeah, but re- actually this game is really not my kind of game, actually. It's a bit... Yeah, it, it's very static, actually, this game. Indeed. But anyway, I um, really don't know why I'm, I, I get stuck. Anyway, Philip, sweet. Um, we'll save that for the... Um, Guest time section, because if we blur it out now, we got nothing for guest time. Alright, so the, the final one would be, um, because of, of course you are not very secretive about this, how have your friends and family reacted to you playing the game? <laughs> the, the, the interest, just a background, I wrote a story about me being uh, addicted to this game. And then after that, people were like, kind of like, uh, making fun of me. Like they all said, "Hey, hi, li- uh, my little pony," or they would say like, "Oh, Phil, how's your little pony?" But I think it just, they just, uh, they just, they just found the article funny, but they were, they're not making fun of me. 
So <laughs> I I think it's okay. I think nobody's been judgmental. Oh, okay. So uh, all right. So that that wraps up our four important questions to begin the show. So now that we have passed that, we move on to the next stage, which is housekeeping. And last week we mentioned that we have a confirmed date for our first MBS show meet. Uh, we're turning one year old this year, and the meetup date is gonna be on the twenty third of February. And this week, we are gonna announce the venue of the meetup. Norman, why don't you let us know where it's gonna be? So anyway, we're gonna hold the meetup at the Curve, that is not in Kuala Lumpur. Where is it, Dan? It's in Mutiara Damansara, which is walking distance from Onutama, and you know, it's actually at the border of Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> I got no idea. I'm from JB. So, but anyway, we're going to meet up at 12 p.m. Come and join us and get a chance to meet the host. Yeah, and stay tuned to our podcast and our Twitter account. We'll announce where we're going to meet in the curve at 12 p.m. And, of course, who's coming and what you're going to expect right there. Indeed. Okay, so let us move on over to news time and see what is happening in this beautiful fandom. And in today's news time, the first thing is... My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, is coming to Japan thanks to Bushiroad. Recently, Bushiroad held a press conference and announced that they intend to produce the Japanese dub of the fourth generation of My Little Pony using the subtitle Tomodachi Ha Maho. I think I got that right. I think so. (laughs) Which means friends are magic. The show is going to be aired on TV Tokyo and other stations starting in April. Following that, the website Animate.tv reports that four of the voice actresses from the anime Tantai Opera, Milky Holmes, are going to voice the ponies. Mimori Suzuko will voice Pinkie Pie, Tokui Sora will voice Applejack, Sasaki Mikoi will voice Rarity, and Kita Izumi will voice Rainbow Dash. The other two ponies, Twilight Sparkle and Fluttershy, will be announced in March. So find all the links in the show notes as well as the link to the press conference. If you understand Japanese, go ahead and indulge yourself. Indeed. So, what do y'all think? Pony is finally coming to Japan. Well, um, ponies in Japan, that's not a strange phenomenon. But it's going to be a hit and miss because Japanese, they're kind of not into the Western animation. And for ponies, they think that the show is meant for little kids because of the subject animals. Because for them, the Japanese, they think that animal shows like this is meant for kids, while shows that portray human characters is for kids to adults. And uh, of course, you actually mentioned there's something about the voice actresses to me, so can you tell our listeners who may not be very familiar with this, who these voice actresses are, because they are probably from other animes as well, correct? Yeah, it's true. Like, like the article said, like four of the main voice actresses here, they play this one anime, um, Tentai Opera Milky Homes, is a kind of a detective story that's produced by Bushiroad. And a couple of the voice actors here also voice characters for Card Fight Vanguard, which is a very popular card game anime series that's running on local TV right now. Alright, so are you excited to find out who the last two voice actresses will be? Yeah, I hope so. The other thing is, it's going to be obviously from Bushiroad crew because um, from what I understand, all of this voice actress works under the Bushiroad umbrella. Okay. Alright, so you better contain that excitement for the next news topic, Norman, because it's yours. Oh, really? No. <clears throat> okay, in the next news topic, high quality plush may be coming to Germany. In a German catalog site called Das Spielzeug, um, I think it's called... Spiles you, I think, I don't know. Well, anyway, in translation, it's the toy. They reported that the company Nixic will be producing pony plush in the second half of the year. Unlike the fine rice pony plush, this pony plush from Nixic, I think that's how you say it. Yeah, they, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, um, Nixic looks to be show accurate. Pictures can be found in the show notes. So, guys, what do you that's think? Pony. <laughs> the pony. <laughs> So anyway, um, Dan, what do you think? If you have a look in the show notes, if you're listening right now, this pony, that Pinkie Pie they put there, it is the most show-accurate plushie I have probably seen. Well, except- Even those that are handmade, they're really close, but this is really, really close for an official make. It's really, really cute, and it's got... I don't know how big it actually is, but I would really want one. Okay. Five, what do you think? Uh, it looks good. It looks a lot better than the, um, Fun uh, the felt strip. The, the felt strip uh, ponies we've seen with the... Uh, oh, the hair. Yeah, the yeah. stringy hair. 
Yeah. Do you own any of those? My daughter has a couple. She has um, a Twilight Sparkle and a Pinky and I think a Rainbow as well. Tell me, okay. t- could you describe us the hair? Does it does it weird you out? Does it weird me out? Nah, it's, it's not so bad, but it's certainly... That, that's always been my biggest complaint about the toys is that the only ones that are really show accurate are the new um, uh, ones at Hot Topic and the little blind bags. Ah, yes. Well, not all the blind bags, really, because if you think about it, the only show accurate one is just... Twilight, yes, yes. Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, Applejack. That's about it. Yeah. Correct. Correct. They're, they're show accurate as long as they're the main ones. <laughs> yeah, indeed. As like, you know, the felt hair one makes all the ponies look like they're all Rastafari because they're all the same <laughs> hairstyle. Okay, but anyway, um, Phil, have you seen it yet? Uh, no, but uh, talking about the toys, I always thought that the attraction of uh, My Little Pony is because of that long hair. Long hair, yeah, indeed. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just thought that the kids like it because of the long hair, but now listening to you all, it's not actually. Well, okay, um, how do I put this? We're not actually talking about the figures because usually they have these little plastic toy figurines and it's fun to, you know, brush their hair. And yeah. for some uh-huh. people who are serious, they actually style it to be show accurate, as in, like, they follow Pinky's curls and rarities, you know, that I don't know how she does that hair. Yeah, actually, you just. Well, I don't want to go into that, but actually. I don't, I don't know what you call it, la, but uh, what yeah, happened is. We have this plushie, and this plushie actually uses felt strips as the hair, and that's not as uh, nice as, uh, you know. Yeah, but anyway, Phil, um, you can categorize the fan base from adults to children, because the children, they'll just buy anything, because it's color, pink, bright, and really cool. And the adult side, we are a bit, how do you say it, uh, picky with what we want. So Uh we kind of go for quality, show accuracy, show accuracy, and does it really look good? Because there's this one sales person that sells plushie, yeah. uh, and it's really good quality. Even one of the show creators bought one from her. White Dove, right? Yes, it's White Dove's creation. And her plush, one commission can go for 450 US dollars. Wow. Okay. It's completely handmade, and you know she does it exactly as how, almost exactly one-to-one from the show. And they're big. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you got like $2,000, $3,000 to spend, <laughs> go ahead. And you'll be happy with it. Seriously, you'll be happy. So now that we're done with the news, we're moving on to our routine this week. And we're going to be reviewing the episode. And th- this week, we're going to hand it over to the Brony Time crew. Welcome Alpha Brony right back onto the show now. He's back. Yep, he's yeah, joining I'm us. Back. <laughs> yes, and also Five Iron... Both of them are going to be handling the episode review this week, so take it away, boys. Okay, so this week we had, um, I don't even remember what the name of the, oh yeah, <laughs> the episode name, of course, was called Just for Sidekicks. Uh, this was a Spike-centric episode, um, and it was kind of different. Uh, the, I guess the breakdown of this episode was uh, Spike was baking a jewel cake, and uh, he int- accidentally ate all his gems before he could finish creating it, and thus had to get more gems. That's where he got the idea to start uh, pet-sitting all the pets of the main six. And much hilarity ensued. Um, it's another great episode. Uh, I'd say this is probably my favorite episode so far, so... It, it's definitely right up there. Five Iron, what do you think of the episode? I think you're entitled to your opinion. <laughs> and you're entitled to your opinion, even though it's wrong. So, uh, uh, like this... Uh, okay... Now, there's been, we've been sort of like mantering back and forth before the show. Five Iron, please inform the people why you came to your horrible decision that this was not a good episode. Uh, th- this episode does have a, a plus, and it has actually moved Merriduel up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> From second best episode to, like, what? First? <laughs> All right. So what what do you not like about this episode? Um, but first of all, was, say, it, I, 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 was it the great animation? Was it the uh, the great gags? Um, was it the fact that it had so many great characters in it? Please, uh, let's see. It, 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 it focused on non essential characters that are not even one dimensional. Um, it, it, it talked about something interesting going off in the Crystal Empire and it gave us pet sitting, and it did not do any good for Spike's character development other than to show him as a selfish, um, lazy, 
jerk the whole time. And, I, and I'll say I don't like folks that run Devil's Advocate. I'm not doing that here. I really did not like the episode. And, I mean, for them to bring in Zakora and then to bring in the CMCs, you know, characters I really enjoy, they still didn't save it for me. Okay. I just didn't okay. like it. I just didn't like it. Okay. So, now here's the thing about Spike, because he was very um, selfish in this episode. Because the whole thing is he convinces all the main six to let them because what's he ends up doing he ends up eating all the gems for his cake at the beginning so he doesn't have any gems to make a gem cake so then he gets the idea to you know watch all the pets in return for gems so he pretty much hits up all the main six individuals and say hey i'll watch your pet today while you go off uh for a gem now the what i liked about this is because if you remember spike is a baby dragon and what are dragons prone to do that makes them grow up greed Indeed. And it turns out they're a bad part of their character. So what we're experiencing is sort of like a re, uh, re uh, revisit. Um, yeah, a revisit of the whole idea of uh, the greed the of my excess. Exactly from that episode. Um, so as he gets more gems, he starts to become more greedy and starts to lose the th- great parts of him that make him spike. Uh, that being the case, we start to see that sort of the dark version of him come out, and then him get sort of like played throughout the entire episode. Now, what I did like about that too is, you know, you see the, all these other characters, which is nice, because that's what I like, is because it's a, sort of a change of pace. We finally have characters we have coming back that we haven't seen in a while. Uh, we talked about this on uh, the last episode of Burning Time, which you should check out at burningtime.com and iTunes, uh, that, you know, we see a lot of reversions from the characters from the previous seasons. We finally have Tank back. We found out what happened to Pee-wee, the uh, Phoenix, which looks like St- Spike actually gave back to his parents, which is cool. Uh, we see Tank again. We see all the pets again. We see Owlicious again. Uh, we get to see the Crystal Empire again. So we get, like, all this stuff comes back to sort of like more world building. And the fact that it has all this focus on the ancillary characters, these pets, it has not been great little sight gags throughout the entire time. Uh, this is like the first episode I think I really busted out laughing on pretty much almost every single scene. There's like so many great gags, which goes to show just how great a storyboard crew they have on this show. All and right, if I'm you're going to show... Something you said. Okay, go Sorry, ahead. Sorry, I was going to play off something you said. Uh, at the beginning of the season, you pointed out that it was a shorter season, 13 episodes, and with that being the case, we expected things to be stepped up, and they were. The episode animation is so much sharper than it was last two seasons. The stories, for the most part, have been very good. But when you consider, again, 13 episodes, and this takes up you know, a larger percentage of the season, this did not stand up to task. It just was not a enjoyable episode, really. It was, it was, I would rather be in the Crystal Empire seeing what the ponies are doing than to see what's going on with their pets. Okay, five, five. Here's the deal. Um, the way that they're doing the episode right now is kind of smart. Because this is kind of a side story to what's going to happen in episode 11, sorry, episode 12 coming. Because in that episode, it's going to be, um, in, the title is Ponies, um, Games Ponies Play. I think something, yeah, Games Ponies Play. So in that episode, it shows what's going to happen from the perspective of the main six. They do stuff for the Crystal Empire and whatnot. But this year... So the next episode is, is the... Uh... What, what the ponies were doing while they were in Crystal Empire. Yeah, and if you think about it, and if you know how to splice the video, you can merge those two episodes into one. Basically, it's almost a, a two-parter, actually. That'll be interesting to see. That thing that I think I've noticed as well, when it moved up to this, when it moved from season one to season two, they started to introduce contiguity within between episodes, which is, I would dare to say, you know, kind of an element of most, um, you know, adult, uh, contemporary... What? I don't know how to put this. Modern serials on TV, like, you know, Walking Dead and stuff like that, those have very strong contiguity. But, yeah, but, but those... the first time ponies have introduced contiguity was in season two, and I know that was because probably they knew that ponies were watching it. Yeah, I mean, sorry, um, Dan, that's yeah. for a TV drama series. That's um, That has a continuous story going on. But for... All right, but um, they didn't include, like, this as a very strong feature, but they started to implement it. No, like, not in the really. previous episode... Keep coming further on. If you didn't watch the Discord episode, you won't get it. You know, but in season one, you can pick a random episode out, and it stands completely on its own, independent of whatever is around it. As a yeah, story. I mean, so. that's true. Then that's true. But the whole idea right now is for this season three, it's yeah. going to a arc, really, a story arc. But for these two episodes, 
it's kind of almost the season finale before what's going on with the episode 13 final. Before we find out what happened to Sombra's horn. Uh, could yeah. be. But uh, what I'm thinking is, we're only looking at what's going on partially because we said that, okay, here is going to be the episode where... I'm sorry, um, this episode, um, just for sidekicks, is the episode where what happened to Spike? Why is he not in the Crystal Empire? Oh, we know, right. because he's taking care of the pets. Now, in the Crystal Empire, the main six are doing the stuff. And if you read the synopsis, they say something about Twilight using her magic to do something. And if I'm right, and this is just uh, theory... Speculation. Yeah, speculation. Um, it has something to do with episode 13. Right. Well, everything seems to be leading up. It kind of reminds me of the first season, how everything led up to the gala. And it looks like they're kind of doing it again with an overarching storyline for the... Uh, for season three and being it shorter they're able to do it a little bit better uh, more concisely uh, but I thought it was I thought it was a fun episode yeah, uh, a lot of great psych gags in there as well too um, the stuff that the fans have been clamoring for we see like Tank I was so excited to see Tank again yeah, yeah and true. Uh, there, there's so many great little gags in the background as well too the whole stuff you see about the characters being developed I loved all the interactions between Rainbow Dash and Tank because you see her trying to be a badass, but then she wants to snuggle him and things like that. It's it's cute little moments right there. Yeah, you know? I, I mean, it it shows Rainbow Dash softer side because, like, if if I were an old man with a heart condition and I see this, uh, I'll be in hospital, <laughs> man. Actually, um, Five Iron, how do you, how do you fare with the other Spike episodes? You know, like Secret of My Excess and uh, what do you call the other one that there was another Spike episode? I can't remember um, what it was. What was it? Um, the, uh, all's well that ends well. Ah, all's well that ends well. Ah, Dragon Quest. All these. How do you fare with these? You know, did you like them as well? Or did oh. you have... Secret of My Access, I really enjoyed. Uh, mostly because of the, the, the back and forth between uh, Spike and Rarity. Um, Al's well... You can do without. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't a big... I'm not a real big actor. Sorry, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> no, that's okay. Dragon Quest, I really enjoyed. I mean, Spike, he's a he's a good character. He's a he's a good character that uh, you know plays an important role in the show. Um, but I just didn't like the the way they went with him. I mean, I know I'm, I'm talking this like as someone's fan fiction, and this is actually canon here. But um, I just I just didn't care for it. I just I, I didn't like I didn't like that we focused on the pets. I didn't think the pets needed an episode. Um, I kind of share that in a sense. I mean, um, my opinion is that I don't really like Spike episodes, for that matter, because I do see Spike kind of as a pet as well. <laughs> that's you know, a funny like, answer. It's more, it's more important than the typical pet like Aloysius and Opalescence, but he's not as important as the main six, that kind of deal. I mean, okay, that's a funny thing that happens to Spike. Um, the scene I guess is... you say, Philip, have you seen the episode at all, or are we just really totally talking over your head at this point? <laughs> Uh, no, I haven't seen yet, but uh, no worries. I'm enjoying the chat. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, Philip, if, if you see it and then you just hear this podcast again, and then you say, "Oh, I get why." You'll say, yeah, you'll yeah. say, "Oh, I see. Alpha was right." And then, <laughs> yes, I think Alpha was right. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, um, there was this scene at the train station where Spike wanted to get on, but he couldn't get on because he needed a chauffeur, and. It does say a lot, you know. And the chauffeur that he picked was the CMCs. Is that and, for a cutie mark? The, I got no idea because the cutie marks are kids by themselves. And I mean, even if you don't, even if it means being a chauffeur for the rest of your life, they want to be a, they want to have that cutie mark. I don't know. Actually, they were trying to do skydiving cutie mark. I, I don't know. Zip lining. You know, no, no, it was skydiving. Oh, they, they try skydiving now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I never thought I'll see the day when a kid's cartoon would feature skydiving. Well, you never <laughs> see the day that um, kid's cartoon show zip lining and failing. Well, I've seen zip lining and all those kind of mean Mulan does it. In, yeah, uh, but fail. Stuff. Right, and fall fail. from a tree. <laughs> oh, okay. But anyway, I I think, um, well, Alpha, it's your review. Yo. Do you want to keep going on or how? Well, uh, pretty much what happens is... Uh, Spike, once he has all the pets and he has all his gems, he tries to pawn the pets off on, like, pretty much anyone else or trying to get them to be taken care of for himself. Uh, and this leads him to pawn off on the key marker series. And pretty much every time he tries to get rid of the pets or ignore the pets, he ends up losing one of the gems that he 
uh, acquired for taking care of them. Uh, through Heaven's Hands, he finally gets on the train because uh, uh, Angel, the great bunny that he is, gets on the train. He has to get on the train. They end up going to the Crystal Empire, uh, and they almost get found out. Uh, right. And when they're about to get found out, and by the main six who are in, uh, on the train coming back from the Crystal Empire, he finally realizes that, you know what, I was a jerk. I should have been paying attention to you guys. I was more concerned about myself. I'm sorry. And that's when Angel is like, cool, now you understand what's wrong. Here, have a gem. It's for you. <laughs> so um, he did the learner's redemption, which I think was the most important part, because we all act like jerks. We all have our bad moments. Yep. And there's the lesson, even though we didn't get a letter to Celestia, oh, sad day. But he realized, you know, what I was doing was wrong. And I did this responsibility, and I had to own up for it. And he finally did, and he was the better for it. And he conquered his greed that turns him evil once again. So it was a winning day for Spike. Indeed. And it's like, it, it sounds, sounds, when you tell it to me, like, this is, I haven't watched the episode, it sounds like he's playing the game, you know? <laughs> he does something, and then he has to lose a gem, and I'm like, uh uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, It's uh, that kind of the way it works, too. <laughs> Well, okay, um, that's a review. Right, I mean, you, you told me about Angel Bunny and the one who got him into this. I mean, you can throw Angel Bunny in the middle of the Everfree Forest, and he'll walk back, he'll get back to the cottage just to give Fluttershy one tight slap. <laughs> yeah. What I love about Angel, too, is because he's always the antagonist, too. Yeah. And every time they do something, they went to letterbox format, Angel. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. So, I, I'm guessing that's the review, a much shorter and straight to the point review than what I usually do. So, I guess um, a rating, a rating score. So, Alpha, what do you think and what do you I, give it? I give it five pets out of five. And reason? Or five sidekicks out of five. That's a new record. That's an academy record. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the reason for? Uh,. Pretty much all the reasons, which I had to explain to Five Iron here. Uh, the animation's awesome. Uh, it's great. To, it's so The thing that I like about it is so refreshing. Because we finally got away from the main six. It was almost a main six free episode, if you think about it. Uh, they had their few things to explain, like where they were. But the whole time, it didn't have them, you know. And it didn't really rely on the cutie marks at Crusader so much. And it was just a different perspective. And you saw a lot more background characters and a lot different interactions. You don't really see Spike and Sakura. You don't see Spike and the Cutie Mark Crusaders, and uh, uh, Spike having to do with other characters that you only see like ants um, on the side. And the fact they couldn't talk added a whole new level to where the physical comedy had to be up to that much more to fill in the plots where they couldn't talk. And I thought that was done very well. Awesome. So, um, five. I what's your score? <laughs> I give, I give it negative two pets out of five. Oh, it snaps! <laughs> That's another Academy record. Really? That bad? I just... It, it, I mean, just okay, no look at this. Hey, <laughs> quiet, you. Uh, look at this season. Okay, we had Spike at your service. That was a good episode. It was enjoyable. Um, well-written, well-animated. Uh, this one, again, had good animations. You know, it's, it's funny, because you say you like that episode, but a lot of people say they don't like that episode because it was so un... because it's a Meriwether uh, Williams episode. So I think that's kind of interesting. Way to go against the Grand Five Iron, you rebel, you. <laughs> well, we have <laughs> Philip on, and he writes a column called One Man's Meat, so get the picture, boys. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, I'm sorry for cutting you off. Continue, <laughs> good sir. No, that's pretty much it. I just, you know, it's didn't care for it, um, but not the end of the world. Uh, I'm looking forward to next week. Okay, true hey. indeed. Um, so then... Maybe the ratings might change, you never know. So then, um, from this banter that we talk about, what's your opinion and what do you think? Well, I have a feeling that it's going to be a kind of cluttered episode. Like, in a sense that, because the way that Alpha told me about it, a lot of elements going on and it's a spotlight kind of featuring all the characters that I think the bronies have been demanding to have more spotlight. Like, I think a lot of people want Tank back. They want Aloysius. They want, uh, what was the Phoenix's name? Um, Pee-wee? Uh, Pee-wee and all these characters back. And I guess... This episode is one that would make a lot of bronies happy, but I think, by the way that Five Iron has his opinion, I think it may have been it may have fulfilled their wishes, but it wasn't done right. Indeed. So, in your opinion, when you once you see it, would you like it or would you dislike it? You are asking me when I see it, will I like it? I don't know. But, oh, okay, uh, maybe maybe I worded it wrong. You will like it because <laughs> you have an understanding taste. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably will because the thing is, uh, I don't know. 
it would take probably this episode to make or break my perception on Spike episodes. Oh, okay. Because I, I have a streak. I have all those episodes that I dislike the most are Spike episodes. So I, this is a make or break. Okay, okay. Yeah, it really is. So, Philip, um, I know you haven't been watching many episodes, but from our little banter here, what's your opinion on this um, on this episode? Sounds like an episode that I want to watch, actually. Really, now? Congratulations, yeah, Alba. You've convinced him to watch it. Yes, yeah. The way you all discuss it, there's so many elements there that uh, I, for me, it's just a cartoon show. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, for me, it's just a cartoon show, but it looks like there's more things that I should be uh, watching. Yeah, it's true, it's true. I mean, like, it's, the, it's like this one show, MS3, uh, MST3K, um, um, Mystery Science Theatre 3000. It says, it's just a show, just enjoy it. But yeah. people on the internet... We enjoy our show and we want to debate about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a false ideal that we try to live up to. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> Indeed. So anyway, um, as for me, I, I enjoy this episode. I laugh out loud. I, I clap for certain scenes. I, I, I enjoy this episode. I, I have to say that, um, honestly, I'm going to break my other record and... I'm going to give it five bribing grannies out of five. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I mean, I like I know, to, to add something to this is that I have a feeling that it would be overshadowed by Keep Calm and Flutteron because that is my current favorite. So I don't know if this can beat that or not because that was really good. Yeah, true indeed. Oh, guys, go look in the Skype chat and look who's in the picture. Oh yeah, I saw that. I think there's like, like I said, there's so many great background characters in there too. I had to go back and see how much stuff I actually missed because it was like it was like <laughs> it was the thing I like about the good episodes are the ones that are content packed. So there was like all sorts of little hidden characters. Like they have the uh, screw. Uh, is it screw loose? Yeah, yeah screw loose. Yeah. The barking, uh, <laughs> barking. crazy pony. <laughs> <laughs> She's in a house, and they just so little great moments like that. So. <laughs> Because uh, Philip, there's apparently one pony in the show who has a... I don't know if it's a mental condition or something. Uh, it's yeah, a mental uh, condition. <laughs> condition. Because she barks instead of... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's another previous oh. episode. You you need to watch that one. And it's a good one too. Okay. But anyway... Um, the hospital. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, so anyway, um, that's the episode review. I hope you guys like it. I give it a 5. <laughs> Alpha give it a 5. 5 Iron give it... Uh, negative two, despite his five names, and <laughs> what? <laughs> and Dan and Philip still haven't watched it yet, so now they have to. And I heard yes. Philip wants to watch it. So anyway, Dan, what's next on the table? Right. So next, we're moving into guest time. So we'll welcome once again Philip Golingai. He's a columnist with the Star Newspaper Malaysia, and he writes, as mentioned earlier, the column One Man's Meat. And of late, he has reviewed the MLP game on our local newspaper. So Philip, welcome to the show. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for having me on your show. Right. So uh, Philip, for anyone who may not be very familiar with uh, who you are, could you care to um, introduce yourself? Okay. Um. I write. For the Star, Star newspaper, every on Mondays I have a column called uh, "One Man's Meat," and it uh, I write about maybe from politics to uh, My Little Pony. <laughs> awesome. Do you normally write about My Little Pony? <laughs> I know, but that, actually that was my first time, and it's uh, the, the article was about my personal experience uh, getting addicted to the to the game. to the game. Now, uh, before you uh, did the game, uh, how did you? Well, how did you find out about the game first and foremost? Okay, uh, I'm an avid follower. Of, uh, I love the iPad, and then I will always like uh, go through uh, tech uh, websites. And then they were saying like, "Oh, there's a there'll, there'll be an apps on uh, My Little Pony." Then I told myself, "Okay, when it comes out, I'll get it." And I wanted to get it for my daughter. Actually, I thought that. Oh, okay, it'll be a fun uh, apps for my daughter. And then later I found out that I'm the one who got interested in the uh, Now, did your, uh, did your daughter watch the show? Yeah, occasionally I think she watched because uh, I think it's on Astro, isn't it? So she will watch the show, but I will watch her watch it. It's but actually 8 a.m. Really on Saturday on. morning at TV7. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So some, sometimes I watch her watch 
the show, but I never really watched the show. So I knew that she liked uh, My Little Pony. And also we bought her those figurine, the Little Pony figurine uh, oh, from okay. Toys R Us. So I figured that, okay, this uh, uh, apps will be perfect for her. That's right. Now, did you, uh, now since playing the game, how long did it take you to find out about bronies in the entire community? Okay, the thing is, when you play that game, you really don't understand actually the characters. Like, okay, it's a, it's actually one dimension. It's like, okay, you see Rainbow Dash, then you, you just know it's Rainbow Dash. Then, then you see the other character like Apple. And then my daughter will kind of, my four year old daughter will kind of tell me that, oh, Applejack loves Apple. But then playing that game, you don't understand. But then later when I was watching the show on iPad uh, with my daughter, then I understand, oh, yes, oh, Rainbow Dash is this. Then slowly their character developed and then it become more exciting. And then I never knew why there was, why do I need to get that element of harmony? I mean, it's right. kind of told in the apps, but I'm like, okay, for me, I just want to get the element of uh, harmony. But then when you watch the uh, cartoon, then you'll understand that, oh, okay, there is, that's, that's why they're getting the element of harmony. No, okay, so um, I recall that in your article you mentioned um, that you actually identify yourself as a brony? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, you, you wrote there something like, uh, I don't want my friends to know that I am a brony, that kind of thing. Uh, 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 yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Uh, so. no, perhaps I'm, on, uh, I'm in denial. <laughs> okay, right. Well, it's a stage that all bronies go through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. For the record, I'm not. Okay. That soon will change. That soon will change. <laughs> if you keep watching the episodes, especially the great episode we had this week, uh, it'll start to change. <laughs> now, um, so I mean, so you play this game, and uh, I think you kind of went through the phase that pretty much all of us did when we played the game. Just like finally, uh, it's really like great a pony game. And it's really fun and everything. And then you sort of see the darker side of the game yes. come out. Tell us about that. Okay. Uh, I don't know what darker side that you saw, but the darker side that I saw is it's it's like as if the game loft is trying to squeeze you uh, of your money, and then it's yeah, not- things are really expensive. It's just a, I don't recall how much I paid because it's you, you know you it's a you just press the button and then you'll get you'll buy the the other elements. But ah uh, yes, it, yeah, it's it's really expensive actually. They're really crazy. I think it's like maybe to buy a. A character that you like is around maybe 50 US, and that's like 150 ringgit Malaysia. And then, can you imagine you're, you're spending 150 without really knowing that you're spending uh, 150 ringgit just for a character? True, 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 true. That yeah. because right. the, the bad thing about this is it's um, once you purchase an item, it doesn't really save into your account, it's just a one time deal. Yes. Yeah. So basically, once you let's just say you buy, to say fifty hearts is a bad example, but let's just say you buy fifty um, gems, and then you save up those fifty gems, and let's just say, oh shoot, my phone needs to be reformatted. So I reformatted my phone. I installed the game. Those fifty gems won't be there. Oh, God. oh that sucks. I didn't know that. It doesn't have. It doesn't seem like you know those games like EA has Origin where they back up your game so you can move to a phone very easily, but not Game Loft. Sadly, that sucks. Yeah, indeed. And I think that's uh, one of the things that people found out with the game too, is uh, someone finally computed it to see like how much it would take to unlock everything, and it takes like like what was it two hundred something dollars? Yeah. yeah, well over that. Two hundred and sixty US dollars to unlock it. Yeah, buy an iPad for that. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, but uh, or you can grind for twelve years. So those are your two options. <laughs> you know, the, the 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 problem with the game is it's it's an okay, it's an adequate game. It's an adequate game for its genre, but there are many other better games out there for its genre. But what the fan one is something more immersive, something more fun, and that's why we have fan projects like the main six. The yeah. MLP, I forgot. I MLP think it's magic. That's, that's right. the main six. And um, online games. And some other free games. Like, if you enjoy playing the Rainbow... Uh, sorry, if you enjoy playing the Flying Pony where they avoid clouds collecting coin, somebody made that as a Flash game before it came out. There, there's a lot of 
Even good. the Apple picking <clears throat> game, it came out on Android as a small light game that you play as Apple. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good independent developers out there doing it for free. And let's just say that, in my opinion, for this game, if they make it into a town building simulator game, that would be so awesome. Yeah, I, I, I maintain that Team Fortress 2 is a pony game. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, indeed. Now, now, the third option we did speak of is hacking, which all of us have done. At least I did. <laughs> so, um, And pretty much to make it into a village creator, what I did is there's a hacking to sort of bypass and make everything free. Then you just buy all the stuff, and then you can spend the rest of your time rearranging and building the town to make it... I'm trying to... I'm in the process of getting mine to look exactly like Ponyville is, and I watch an episode and try and see, like, where all the different buildings go together to recreate Ponyville on my phone. So, it's... it's and for that, it's good, but it definitely seems the game's losing its luster. Yeah, I, I'm... I'm at... Okay, I, to be honest with you guys, I spent real-world cash to buy gems. Ah. Uh, but, but, here's the thing. They were on a discount, so I bought them. That's why. Uh, well, we have a lot of friends. The discount I mean, is not it, cheap, you know. You're saying? You're buying it at the discount is still not cheap. Yeah, but it, it it depends on what you buy, really. Because in my case, I bought those gems, and I think it was two ninety nine or one ninety nine for fifty gems or fifty five gems. I don't really remember. So to me, um, to for me, with the cheat that I'm playing with, it's totally worth it. Eh, eh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it, still, it still bothers me. And, like, I can't fault the company for wanting to make money. I, def, I I think that we do get a lot of, like, entitlement when it comes to the internet. Like, how dare you want me to buy something? And I don't fault that. If an app, I'll pay for an app online, you know, totally. If it's, or I'll do the ad version because they make money that way as well, too. Oh, yeah. I have no problem with Hasbro or Gameloft trying to make their money. That's what they're there for. That way they put it out. What I do have a problem with is gouging customers. Oh, and yeah. knowing that the customers will do it. That's what bothers me. Yeah, and you're more, that, you're more, you'll be yes, more comfortable right. if the app had like a one-off purchase kind of deal. Yeah, or if the purchases like were made sense. Like if the ponies were like 50 cents or if they want to do 99 cents a pony, which is still kind of ridiculous... I would be more okay with that. Or yeah, if they true. had ad supported, which they do for other game off games. Oh, actually, so you they can have pay sorry. for gems and then still throw ads at me. That's cool. Yeah, so that's true. That's true. I mean, um, there's this one uh, i iPod i i device game called um, Tab something. Um, I think it's called uh, Jubix or Jukube something like that. It's a song game. Um, you press. Um, there's a nine block thing you press it according to let's just say it's a DDR simulator, and okay. the way that game works is they give you three free songs from Konami's playlist. But if you want to buy more songs, there's this package like the Lady Gaga or the let's just say some other bands that I can't remember right now. Tapulus had that reputation for Tap Tap Revenge when it was a big thing. Yeah, so basically you can buy songs like for me. That's worth well, it for me. Like Xbox and stuff does that. It's DLC. And like yeah. I'm with that part too. It's the gouging which bothers me. Yeah, yeah. Which even you see in other <clears throat> DLC content uh, providers, I hate when like here's a game that comes out and they immediately have DLC or when they put the DLC content on the disc which oh. you have to pay for to unlock. Oh, yeah. A lot of people got pissed off about that. Bioshock did that. Uh, Mass Effect did that. So it's kind of a rip to say, hey, mm, here's the disc yeah. and there's content on the disc, but guess what? You got to pay extra if you got, want to get to that stuff that you just bought. Yeah, but f- um, Alpha, not really for Mass Effect because basically if you buy the premium version or let's just say extra five like, bucks. Like the uh, extra characters like Kasumi and stuff like that. Oh, those I, were I, later I, on. This one, those were, uh, sorry, those were not on disc. Yeah, I've heard she was. Like, that That content was a disc. I know for Bioshock, a lot of the extra stuff was done. Bioshock 2, all the multiplayer stuff was already on the disc, and there's uh-huh. a couple other ones that have done that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, anyway. So, I, I'm guessing that from your, what you're saying is that, you know, the, the way that the quests were worded were kind of um, really gouging, because you they'll make you buy, they'll make you pay for Rainbow Dash, because even if you want to play it peacefully and own a town and you want to do the quest, I mean, I don't mind collecting 5,000 gem. Uh, co- bits from around the town but you make me pay for the pony to continue my quest if you can't do that you still have to pay true true or take a long time to play it 
by that yeah, time. Yeah, it's forever, isn't it? If you don't pay. Yeah, or you can just uninstall it and do something else. And that's what I did the first few times to get it right, get it right. And um, our co-host is not here with us today, Charlie. He actually calculated, if I'm not mistaken, how long it will take if you're going to live off the five-day bonus, which is three gems per five days. It will take over, I think, three to four years just to get enough to unlock Rainbow Dash. <laughs> Considering that you're not spending gems on anything else. Oh, indeed. Yeah, crazy. <clears throat> yeah. So, Philip, uh, besides... Uh, talking uh, about the gem... Okay. Yeah. No, go ahead, man. Go ahead, continue. Okay. Uh, talking about the gem, my problem was I, you know, I diligently collect them, manually collect them, and yeah, then guess what my daughter does? Oh God! <laughs> Randomly spends up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She'll she'll collect. She'll just misuse it. <laughs> so I've lost a lot of gems, which I really like, worked hard for it. How did, dare your four year old tell me about your pony? Because I asked him, Did you complete the quest and did you unlock the harmony stones? And he's like, No, because the Paris spreads all over the place, and uh, you know, his daughter just goes in and types every single one of them. I feel for you, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, then, uh, so you played the game a lot, now you sort of watch the episodes. Are you now do you feel like you're starting to get into the show itself? Has it piqued your interest enough to continue on with the show? No, because I'm still in denial. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. But you're watching episodes though, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. With his daughter lah, so far, but um, I don't think you are at the stage where you watch it on your own, correct? Yes, my alibi is my daughter. I don't <laughs> watch it on my own. Right. <laughs> you have a good alibi, seriously. You have a good alibi, seriously. Once you're at that stage where you're buying figures... Like, I'm buying it for my daughter and keeping it for yes. myself. <laughs> and Norma, we're the only two people on the show today who don't have such an alibi. Um, <laughs> that, was, that was our alibi as well, too. It's like, it's for my kids. Yeah, in, indeed, indeed. No, but um, seriously, um, Philip, um, talking about your experience with the games and whatnot, have you experienced the community? Oh, no, no. Oh, not yet. So you haven't heard any songs from the community, so fan videos? No, uh, yeah, you want to sing? You want to sing the song so that I can be more familiar with this? Oh, no, no. Oh, there's there's, like there's, so there's a lot. There's a lot. So, I mean, so basically you haven't been in, well, you haven't discovered the fan music yet or the fan videos. The depth no. no. Ah. It goes pretty, the rabbit hole goes pretty deep, brother. Uh, yeah, let me tell you. <laughs> there are people at this um, forum, they're called, the community called My Little Remix and they do a lot, they're very music centric. And they've done uh-huh. charity albums for a uh, cause in Africa to build a, a for orphanage there with a group called Bronies for Good, which has been interviewed by our friends at Brony Time. And then they've done another project called Balloon Party, which was to make an album to raise funds for musicians to perform at BronyCon, which is which happens in um, the States. It's a convention for Bronies in, in August this year in Baltimore. And these albums come out and they are massive. They have at least 20... Five tracks each. Yeah, and then, huge albums. Yeah, and done by the community. That's that's the deal. It's like just imagine. Uh, let's just say a local show on TV has a rabbit following community, and those people they do music, they do art, they do animation, animations. They do they even do fan made episodes of said show, and they do a lot of good things like charity. All those things. Just imagine that. But in a more wide and international range. Alpha, you got anything? Yeah, I just want to ask. So, uh, I know you've uh, talked about this game, and you do have this uh, recurring article uh, for the the star. Uh, And what is the name of your current article? Or your recurring article? Oh, what do you mean recurring article? It's, um... Oh, oh, the name of my column? Yes. Uh, it's called One One Man's Eat. Excellent. And, um, what is it about? Uh, okay, why it's called One, one Man's Meat is because, you know, the phrase One Man's Meat is Another Man's Poison. So um, probably there are things that uh, some people might not be happy with uh, uh, with what I write. Okay, it's about uh, this column. Is actually... Uh, it, it, the topic can run from uh, Malaysian politics to My Little Pony. So it's quite a wide range of topics that I cover. For okay. example, my next my next column will be on uh, missing children. Mm-hmm. Because the biggest story in Malaysia now is about the 
about William Yao, who went missing and was later found dead. Ooh. Really? That's that's quite a broad range you got on the topic here. Yeah, I mean, just, just to fill you in about William Yao, and uh, from all the people here at the MBS show, we would like to offer our sincerest condolences to the family, if they are listening in by any chance. It's um, basically, to fill you in, it's uh, a boy went missing a few days ago, and um, just on Thursday, they found a body floating in the Klang River, and it apparently was him. Jeez. And what's, uh, I guess your article is talking about, is there an issue or like, is there, is there always okay. an issue? Yeah. But Actually, the, the reason why I wrote that article is to at least warn parents that you have to be vigilant, that you have to keep your eyes on your kids because there yeah. are, there are uh, yeah, bad elements out there who are just waiting for an opportunity. I don't see like, a, that's seems pretty straightforward. I don't see like anyone could say like, no, I'll let your kids go <laughs> as opposed as a opposing view to it. Oh. Um, but I can see, like, a, a lot, definitely with the political stuff, that's definitely going to be uh, cause controversy as well, too. Um, I get you know, the whole point of yours is like a uh, sort of like an outside view about a certain topic. Uh, I'm talking about, you know, one man's means another man's poison. Uh, do you get a lot of feedback from your article or your column, I should say? Uh, I, yeah, I get feedback from uh, Twitter. And sometimes some people agree with it, some people disagree with it, but it's a reflection of how divided Malaysia is politically. Mm. And have you got much feedback about the Pony article? I mean, obviously, you're now on a podcast about ponies, so... Uh, I, I, I think people were more like they were making fun of it. It's like, oh, Phil, oh, I didn't know you were what. You know, they, they gave us kind of little... Uh, it was me, more like, yeah, ripping me. Oh. Did it come from your, you know, your friends or your off or your, or your colleagues more? Uh, I think it came from uh, both sides, I think, from Twitter and also from my colleagues. Actually, I really want to ask, what did your editor say about it? Uh, he didn't say anything. <laughs> he, knows, he knows I write these kind of things. Okay. <laughs> did he probe a few people to the office? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> well, see if you can get one on him and then you'll know. So. <laughs> I just wanted to ask about the presence of um, bronies probably within the, the kind of uh, job scope that you're in. Is there anyone else in your office who plays as well, by any chance? Not that I know of, but uh, one of my colleagues, he tweeted to me and said, Phil, I'm uh, downloading the apps into my Android. So I never check with him, and maybe I should check so that I can get more heart <laughs> from him. Indeed. So, well, you can always add us. Yeah. yeah. And uh, as, uh, as Alpha asked you earlier about how the reaction was, um, before you got the email from me, did you get anything from uh, anyone else, like a complete stranger? Uh, no, uh, in terms of email, only from you. Okay, right. Now that we're, now that uh, you know, we've been asking you so many things. Uh, has it changed your opinion or your curiosity on this fandom in any way? Uh, yes, it has made me a bit uh, curious. Actually, uh, yeah, I was fun. I thought it was a very American thing. Oh, okay. I didn't know that there was a Malaysian um, brony club until you emailed me. So my big question for me is the most important question is why. Why become a brony, actually? Isn't it... Okay, it sounds like uh, I'm cynical or whatever, but it... Isn't it I a can kid answer this kind one. of game? I'm sorry? Oh, okay, a kid, it's a kid cartoon. Yes, it is a kid cartoon. And um, for me, personally, when I first heard about yeah. My Little Pony, uh, I had the assumption they was talking about the toy. But for you, was it the toy, the show, or the game? Which, which one came to your mind first when you heard about My Little Pony? Uh, it's first the show, then only the game, because uh, my daughter watched the, the show first. Mm, All right. Okay. I mean, for me, it was the toy. toy. I mean, oh, have you heard the of the previous generations about, you know, the, the ones that came before the current one? Oh, like no. When, it came out in the 1980s, actually, My Little Pony. It was oh, very okay. old. But um, the previous generations didn't fare as well, and they were very, very targeted crappy. towards kids. Yeah, it was crappy in the sense that it was not something that we would watch. It was very targeted towards kids, and it did its job. It kept the kids entertained. So mm-hmm. now when they rebooted it, and uh, if you recall the cartoons of the 90s like Dexter's Lab and uh, Foster's Home, these kind of cartoons, they called in the people who made those cartoons uh, possible, Lauren Faust and her husband, and made them work on My Little Pony. So that actually led to this its big success that it was, is today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a one way, easy way to like relate, because everyone's like, how can you like that show? And it's like, well, how about this? Philip, have you ever seen any Pixar movies? Mm, yes. Do you like the Pixar movies? Yes. Why? They're for kids. 
Uh, uh, but I, I don't become obsessed with it. It's like after I watch it and it's done. Good for well, exactly. But that's like, um, that's really why I can say is like, how can you like a show that's for kids? Because it's a good okay. show. Um, mm-hmm. Whether or not it's, uh, we're not the target audience, uh, good work is good quality work. And like Dan said, you know, they had these, uh, you know, Lauren Faust who did amazing shows and is an amazing writer and creator, really put a lot of heart into it. And when you watch the show, you can get that, and the jokes are actually good. And the community sort of came out because it's the idea of, like, there's such a positive message behind the show that we feel is really lacking in the world. Because the whole idea of the elements of harmony, uh, you know, friendship is magic. And it seems like such trivial ideas, but, like, really? Are those really trivial ideas to be honest and be a good friend to people and try to make the world a better place? And I think that crusade has sort of overshadowed even the show itself. It's like, you know, we are, you know... There's still good in the world, and there's so much darkness in the world. Here we are to try and bring some of that light back to it. Just like you are in the game, trying to bring light back to the dark parts of the world, and it costs us a lot of money to do it too. But it's uh, <laughs> what we love, so it's like a circle. <laughs> but that's the uh, best way I can describe it. So, yeah, yeah. Put the stamp on that. <laughs> yep, I, I have seen. So from the limited amount of episodes that you have actually watched, with it, uh, do you find it easy to relate to the story like especially you watch keep calm and flutter on which was the one with uh, discord and the dra- draconicus in it did you find it easy to relate to what was going on i know you weren't paying probably much attention to it were you no i, I don't think I, for me i see it as uh it's not a real it's not it, it's a cartoon world and my world is the real world mm, okay so, yeah I, I don't think i can relate to it uh, I, I think okay, it's. Right? I, I think your what, what you're saying is is your perception of the things that you're watching. For us, the way we watch it is a show like um, The Walking Dead or even Desperate Housewives or whatever shows on TV. Like yeah, you, you can become a fan or become obsessed with any show that's really good that you care about the characters. That's the big thing. So you know, for us, we focus more on the storytelling and what's going on. But for mm-hmm. you, Philip, I think it's just a matter of... It's a show on TV. It's yes, just correct. there. It's just noise. Okay. Yeah, I, I can understand. I can understand. But, well, if you do go into it and if you do enjoy it, you understand why we like it. Yes, okay. I'll find out more. Because it's a big community. And because um, you mentioned the word brony in your article, uh, and I understand you must have done quite a bit of research to get there, what was, where did you mainly find out about brony culture? I, I I googled it actually, and then I was reading. Uh, yeah, I was reading it, and then I, I I found that that term was quite interesting, Brony. Well, let's right. just hope you so got the like good one. Equestria Daily or something. <laughs> <laughs> Say again. Did you read uh, something like Equestria Daily, like something made by Bronies, or did you read articles about Bronies? I think I just read. Uh, I read an article, and it says it mentioned that the fans, the adult fans of uh, My Little Ponies, are called Bronies. Right, that was, if I'm not mistaken, it was in New York Times. Yes, and Guardian. Ah, yes, right, that was a Guardian article, actually. Oh, I read just... the Guardian one, I, have the, I read the New York Times one. Oh, let's just hope they're okay. positive oh, no, ones. Sorry, not, New, not New York Times, Wall Street Journal. Oh, what did he say, eh? There was an article about um, these guys in uh, in New York who went to a restaurant to eat, oh. and they asked the waiter to change the channel to watch ponies in, uh, in an Indian restaurant <laughs> in New York. <laughs> okay. So a, guy did a, so a guy did a story on it. And there have been stories okay. about BronyCon, which is that big convention that's happening every year in the States. And it's not the only convention in the world. There's like, I don't know, Everfree Northwest, Cantalot Gardens. Philippines has one, that's PH BronyCon. Australia has one that's coming up as well. And they're all over the place. It's a global fandom, really. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So, um, I'm guessing Philip has some questions for us, besides the one you asked earlier. Okay, h- how do you become a, a bro? I mean, is there a definition of like... Uh... How do you qualify to be a brony? I mean, well, not you have to watch the show or you have to declare yourself no, or no. you can have minimum interest. How, no, how, no, how, how, the, how is it? From, from me, the way I see it is it, there's a level to it. Um, basically, down the middle, there's I enjoy the show. It's a really good show. Or I enjoy the show and I love everything in it. I want to be a fan of it. I want to buy everything. I want to meet friends. I want to convert my whole family. Basically, there's two sides to the coin. Yeah, it depends on how crazy you are, I guess. <laughs> yes, yeah, true. And Dan wants to speak. <laughs> yes. And uh, I said, um, okay, basically, I think as you put in the article, you operationally defined the word brony there. And it's pretty much set, 
the standard for the article. It's as you said, you researched it and it said a fan of the show. So basically, that's what it is. And if people want to qualify it, there's, there's a system online about, they call it the five stages of becoming a brony. If I'm not mistaken, it's doubt, then it's a uh, intro. It's like it's feature. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's something like, you know, you, you, you reject it, and then you, something, it goes all the way to denial, and then acceptance, and something like that. It goes all the way in, and probably at the denial stage right now. It's like me, either being a drunk or dying, it's like the same five steps, or whatever it is. <laughs> but, but the, Which, yeah. It's not really a very one size fits all system because all of us, all four of us on the show right now, um, we all have come from different. We all are brownies for different reasons. We all come from different, uh, you know, backgrounds, and we all got dragged into this fandom by different means. Uh-huh. So that's the thing. It's got it's got a lot of diversity in it. Some people are in it for the art. Some people are in it for the music. Some people are in it. Like we had a guest because we who's been into ponies ever since 1980s, which is when the first generation came out. And here's the fun part. There are some people who are fans of the show, go to the conventions, but do not cons- consider themselves bronies. So, you know, teach his own. <laughs> it's yeah, actually just a term. I did in denial. It's not really that. Some people don't like to relate to the term because they believe it has a negative, um, you know, impl- implication. So they call themselves, yeah. I'm just a fan of My Little Pony. I'm not a brony. And, um... It's just a term, really. Like how Star Trek fans are called Trekkies and Glee fans are called Gleeks and One Direction fans are called Directioners. It's that kind of branding, I would say. Yes, and Justin Bieber fans are called Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my, my next question is, is there a stigma that uh, you are a brony in Malaysia? Hmm. Well, I think well, that... Sorry. I'm not really sure because there's not many of us to start with. I mean, it's growing really fast, but... I would think that, you see, when we walk around, like, I I have a pony t-shirt. All of us have t-shirts with ponies on it. You know, I have a t-shirt with Pinkie Pie on it. Norman has t-shirts with all of them on it. And um, when we walk around, sometimes it gets attention. Sometimes people just think we're wearing a cartoon. And some people are just, they just don't know about it. So one day I was at work, actually. I just started my internship recently. And uh, one of the senior videographer comes behind my computer, sees my wallpaper. And, wow, you also like Japanese anime, huh? (laughs) Then, so basically, uh, some people don't really know about uh, ponies just much, just yet. They think it's just, oh, you're just watching another Japanese cartoon. Yeah, I mean, then, um, I, I think for us Malaysians, nobody really cares and nobody really knows. So, I, I mean, mean, if you put in the stigma, you put you include the stereotype of girl show and kids show into the equation, then things will change. Yeah, but if you no, look at but, it on one thing, it's like, you're probably watching, yeah. No, yeah, no, but what Philip's asking is, um, so, sorry, Philip, what did you ask again? Yeah, is, is there a stigma when people know, like, do, 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 yeah, how, yeah, okay. how do they react when they know that you're a diehard fan? Okay, um, it's very the, mixed, really. so, it's sorry, really um, very mixed. Then, because, then, yeah, sorry. The, the thing is, in Malaysia, nobody, nobody really knows what's My Little Pony because I've been to a printer shop printing pony stuff and they say, what is this? I remember it from the late 80s, but I don't know. So, in Malaysia... That stigma, it's kind of almost transparent or not there. But I've heard stories of people that say that they have a shirt and then the people that know, they tease people about it because they know where it's from. But in general, nobody knows, nobody cares. But uh-huh. for the state side, what do you have to say? Meh. <laughs> 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 I don't know, it's like, um, how I say it? Yeah, it's... it's uh... If you people notice, I mean, uh, some people are like really extravagant about it or have to feel like I have to come out of a closet, so to speak. <laughs> Me, I just play it. I don't want to say low key, but I'm just like, eh, doesn't matter. I mean, I have a, I put, I have Derpy on my car. I have uh, MLP shirts, and no one's really questioned or said anything about it. So, eh, what do you know? Derpy on your car, like a vinyl? No, I have like a window sticker. So, Ooh, like okay. on the the quarter window of my driver's side window, there's a, a We Love Fine uh, Derpy sticker. Right. So, everyone at work sees it. Uh, <laughs> no one said anything, so. And you know. Fine, what about you? I, I'm not what you would call a brony evangelist, but I don't shy away from it. I. Uh, yeah, I think that's the uh, best way I can describe it, too. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, nothing is appealing when someone tries to cram it down your throat. I mean, it could be you know, sports fanatics. Um, and I, I've met plenty of them, and they they get on your nerves real quick. So it, it's all kind of how, how you carry yourself, so to speak. So, um, any more yeah, like, questions, Phil? 
I think my last one is what's the attraction actually? Huh? Hmm. It sounds yeah. I, I think I've asked this, but what's the attraction? Actually, actually? Uh, before you continue, actually, I one more thing to add, but I don't know if you want. Okay. To. Yeah, because uh, as I said, when you combine when Malaysians don't know about this show, really, it's um because they think it's just another cartoon. But as I said, once you combine it with the negative um, implications of an adult watching a show that's meant for girls, on top of that, a show that's meant for kids. Because some people might know very shallowly, okay, that's My Little Pony. They saw it in Toys R Us. They saw it probably on MTV7 by turning it on accidentally at 8 a.m. in the morning. And people might have, th- people do have this stigma that, you know, you're a brony, uh, that kind of thing. You, yeah. you, you're messed up, you know, things like that. And I, I don't like to bring politics into this, but especially in this uh, country where we have a very, very strong, um, you know, sense of, I wouldn't say a strong sense of masculinity, but... It's kind of like enforced because if you know about of late, a uh, few years ago, they wanted to do up in Kelantan, they wanted to do these masculinity camps and stuff like that. Mm. Really? Do you recall that, mm. Philip? Yeah, yeah. Boot camp they, for, uh, for uh, boys. sissy men. <laughs> yeah, for soft men and stuff. They call it the Lucky Lumbut. And oh. it's uh, mm. they wanted to toughen up the men of the state. So they have this specific camp to get them all toughened up. And for me personally, when I when I became a brony, I had a fear that I might land myself in one of those things. <laughs> no, okay. Um, but then, the same goes for you like watching Dora the Explorer. Isn't that a show for little kids? Yeah. It's a similar. It's a similar thing. Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I don't like watching Dora, by the way. Yeah, but that's, that's <laughs> the thing. Some people do. I mean, but Philip, you, um, like you said, one man's meat is another man's poison, and yes. you could go for one man's. Show is another person's yeah. Uh, yeah. The same implication, yeah, social same. misconception. As I said, it's uh, where I wouldn't, I don't like to say this, but I think we're still kind of a very shallow uh, community here. As in, I don't think we like to do research very much. Oh, so, I do. Uh, I mean, unless of course you're like Philip and you're in the press, or if you're like me, I'm also in the media, and we have to do research. We can't run away from it. So for those people who don't really do their research, yeah, they'll hold the negative stigma. You know, they hold it strongly for some reason. Yeah. That's basically it. Yes, yes. Okay. What's what's the attraction actually of this show? So Dan, why don't you go first? Okay, uh, as you said, all of us came into this came to this fandom from different means, and each of us have our individual ways of relating to it. For me personally, when I watch it, I could relate to characters on the show because there's this saying that these characters are not one dimensional. They're no longer like the old type of cartoon characters, which are hundred percent good or hundred percent bad. You know, they have their flaws. Like Twilight Sparkle, the purple unicorn, she's she's very systematic. We dare say OCD level kind of systematic. And a lot of people can relate to her because there was one episode about deadlines and assignments, you know. So I think people like me at university who do assignments and of course are last minute, like every typical Malaysian is, will they've definitely, you know, procrastinate. And you watch that episode, it's like, oh gosh, you know, she's just she was in a situation exactly like the one that I was in last week you feel that these characters are relatable to a level. They're not perfect. Even though they're the good guys, they're not, the, they're not perfect at all. They have their flaws and they learn to overcome it. So that's what relates to me the most. And having characters that are, in that sense, flawed, helps to, you know, get you to watch this show and really, really enjoy it. Okay. So, Elva? Uh, pretty much, like, the ways I can say is that, you know, people like, why do you like the show? Um, short answer, it's a good show. Um, I mean, Really, it's like the stuff that like circles around it. If you're talking about like the game or the toy line or the books, it's um it doesn't really translate uh, the same impact the show actually has. I think there's a huge uh, valley between the two because the show is just done on a different level, and it's actually it's got like I said, it's done very well. Uh, it's the songs are in well, and the thing that really makes it, uh, it good is that you don't have the sense that anyone's doing it for the paycheck. There are shows out there, uh, even big name shows, but especially kid shows, where people are like this is going to pay for the mortgage this week, <laughs> you know. And that's kind of you know what you get from a lot of shows that people are just like grinding through it because it has to get done, you know. Spit this out so kids will buy the a company toy with it, and you don't get that from the show uh, because it's done well, it's done with heart, and it's done really good. And the best thing I can say is like you know, when someone's just like, "Why do you watch it?" Because it's a good show, and watch it yourself, and you'll see. Uh, just like you get an att- uh, attraction to any other show. Like, I'm a huge Walking Dead fan because it's a great show and it's a great comic. Um, it's it, If it's done well, there's there's a reason people like it. It's the best way I can say it. Awesome. So, Five, what about you? Kind of echoing Alpha here. Um, 
mean, we, we've talked about everything from Pixar to Dora the Explorer, and in those two comparisons, there's, there's a vast uh, drop off of quality. I mean, Pixar is the top of the game for animated content, and then Dora the Explorer is repetitive cookie cutter over and over. I know this because I, I have a daughter who used to watch that. Um, yes, yeah, same here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, again, with, with you know, the someone looks at you and says, why, why are you watching this, this show for, for kids? It's, what's the appeal? Um, the, really, the, the best answer that I've come across is just, it's it's quality, it's good. It has um, um, endearing characters, good storylines, fantastic animation, uh, great voice acting, um, and quite frankly, it doesn't suck. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So and to bring back that, sorry, go ahead. No, there's, there's so much stuff out there that is terrible. I mean, there's it's just like like what Alpha was saying. There's so many things that just here. Well, here's the newest version of. You know, I'm not big on Transformers, but I'll say it because they've been around since the same time period. Here's the newest version of Transformers. Go buy this. I mean, they intended to crank out something, and they got something so much more uh, than what they bargained for. True indeed. Yeah. indeed. Like Linkin Park's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Dan, you got something to say for us? Yeah, and uh, just to bring this all back, it's because the whole show this time has brought it this reboot. It's the fourth generation of My Little Pony, and they wanted it to really make a big change. They were sick and tired of the same old little girls watching it over and over again kind of deal. They wanted to make a show that the kid can watch and the parent won't be sitting behind going like... Okay, no, no, no. Lauren Faust did. La- uh, Lauren Faust, I'm sorry. Yeah, Lauren Faust yeah. did that. It's like Hasbro just wanted to say, here, make another one. Like, we're talking about Transformers. Like, create oh, yeah, it. Lauren Faust says, I want to make it awesome. Lauren Faust was given artistic freedom, and she was the one, like, I want to... She, she wants to, to be... No, she knows kids will watch it, so it's like... She didn't want the parents to be, like, sitting in their sofa being like, when can I watch the news? You know, it's she wanted it to be... One thing that the parent and the child could enjoy simultaneously so it wouldn't, like, bore their parents out. Because typically the old type of formula for cartoon shows like Care Bears and the old generations of My Little Pony would be, there is a good guy and he's 100% good. There's nothing wrong with him. And you're watching them running around solving very trivial problems like, why is there a butterfly on the table? (laughs) That kind of deal. So now they put in real-life problems and kind of um, make you relate to it. So, you know, your, your kid is probably watching it because it's colorful, it's cute, and it's nice, and you're watching it, and you understand every single detail that's in it. Like, why there's a butterfly on the table? Yeah, well, like, why there's a butterfly on the table, and the implications of a butterfly on the table. <laughs> yeah, and like then the fandom will come and overanalyze it. <laughs> yeah, um, as for... Or another example of, like, a show that is really good is, like, if you watch uh, the latest generation of Sesame Street... I know it sounds kind of odd to say this, but if you're watching Sesame Street, it's really funny because I actually enjoy watching that with my son. Because uh, the thing is, like, and uh, it's produced in New York, and my sister-in-law is in New York, and she actually knows some of the people who work on the show. Uh, and it's a lot of people in their, um, you know, people in their 20s who grew up on it. And they're like, you know, we're running the show, but we, you know, we want to add our own spin to it. So if you watch Sesame Street now, there's a lot of stuff that's thrown in there for the adults that kids will never pick up on. Uh, the latest thing they did, which was hilarious, is they have a segment called Birdwalk Empire, which is a play on HBO's Boardwalk Empire. And the kids watching it will have no idea what they're talking about, but the show is just, it, the skit is so hilarious. And they do the opening sequence of Boardwalk Empire shot for shot recreation, except instead of flicker bombs, they're saltine crackers. And it's just, it's I was dying laughing watching it. And it's like stuff like that that, you know, it's... Or even when they have these celebrities on to talk, it's like kids have no idea who that is, but you're like, holy crap, that's Adam Sandler, or that's, you know, so and so. And it's it's neat to see that. And it makes it enjoyable for the parents as well, too. So it's mm-hmm. the idea of like not doing it for the paycheck, but doing it because you want to make it interesting, because you want to make it something that you want to watch. And I feel you really get that from the show. Mm, true. And as for me, I watch it because it's, well, I, I'm echoing what everybody is saying is, but for me, I watch it because it's a really good show. It has good writing. It's good art. And all around the best 25 minutes of my life. But I watch it because I enjoy the show. But I stay because I enjoy the community. Because for me, watching the show is okay, but the community is better. Yeah community makes up a lot of the great things because you have people to talk to about it you're not like alone especially some of us like me when i first got into it i thought oh crap am i the only one in the world who has this issue of being the only adult watching the show and then you start to realize when you have people to talk to about it and then not only that you hear amazing music amazing artworks videos and stuff coming out like someone took 
the opening sequence of The Walking Dead and completely redid it in a, using My Little Pony footage. Yeah, it looks amazing. amazing. Yeah, a lot of people cheered like nobody's business for it at the BronyCon when it was aired as part of Pony's the Anthology too, which features m- tons of great content as well. True, and the best thing about this fandom or this community is um, us regular people get to talk to the voice actors, to the people who do the show, to people who direct the show, to the music. I mean, the interaction to those people that do the show, you can talk to them easily. Unlike some other shows, like uh, for any any show, it's kind of hard to reach them. You're not going to be able to reach like Adam Sandler or Nicolas Cage as easily. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe Nicolas Cage. He needs the money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, this show and this fandom, it's really good. Like, even for our show, we interviewed Michelle Krieber and she's the voice for Apple Bloom. And the process of getting her was hard, but once we got her, it was awesome. And she was willing, you know, she's not like, I don't have time for this. You know, she's, she's more she's more of an open-minded person, and they, they're open-minded to their fans. And we always ask them, you know, what was your reaction when you first found out that it's not just little girls watching your show? And at first, they didn't they weren't really comfortable, but after it grew on them, they, they started to become friends with the community. You know, they're not on a totally different level. You know, they're uh-huh. just friends. Mm, true indeed. So Friendship I, is magic. Indeed. Yep. Um, I, I'm guessing that this is all the questions we have for Philip. And Philip, I'm guessing those are the questions for us? Yes, correct. Any more? I'll have more uh, when I see you all for, uh, for an article. All right, awesome. Oh, the meetup, so, right, right. Awesome. So, Philip, I Our hope we... <laughs> So, Philip, I hope we haven't weirded you out with our talk of... I, I'm getting out of this room now. <laughs> oh, no! Well, you're on your phone, so you can bring your phone with you. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I think that's about it. So, done. Yeah, let's uh, move right on to the shout-out section where we can, where everyone here gets a chance to shout-out to somebody they you know, want to shout-out to. So, Norman, why don't you go first? Okay, so my first shout-out goes to you, Dan. Um, thank you for bringing on Philip. And, Philip, thank you for being on our humble show. I hope, um, A, you have a positive outlook on the Brony community, and B, I hope you don't think us as weird people who like colourful ponies. Okay, can, uh, my shout-out. Um... I'm here because I just want the heart, so don't forget <laughs> to send it to me. My game log ID is uh, Philip Collingai, that is P H I L I P G O L I N G A I. Please send me because I want to get Zokora. <laughs> and uh, what happened is that if you want, if you didn't catch that, you can look in our show notes and you'll find that game log ID right there. So add him and add all of us and send us all hearts. Indeed. And also Five Iron and Alpha for bringing on this show this late. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Then? Yeah. And uh, my shout-outs also to Philip. Thank you very much for coming on. Well, that's about it. Okay, so um, Alpha Five, do you have anyone to shout-out to? You first, Five Iron. Okay. Uh, my shout-out will be to Rommel of the Bronies for Good, who is currently un- undergoing a 24-hour broadcast period uh, to raise money for their current uh, project, which is uh, Seeds of Kindness 2. So check out their website, bronysforgood.com, and you can give them a little bit of money, help them out. We'll try, we'll try. Yeah, and bronysforgood.com, if you donate to them, you get three massive albums full of music. You can't say no to that. Yeah, it's always good stuff. And Alpha, what about you? Crap, I can't beat that, because Bronies for Good is good. Uh... <laughs> I used to shout out to all the bronies out there, because um, like I said, we're a great community. Uh, thank you to all those guys who make it a good community and keep it a good community. Uh, it's supposed to be fun, so let's keep it that way. Indeed. And uh, to Philip, to no fill drop, you in, Mama. Philip, you still there? Yep. Yeah, to fill you in, uh, Bronies for Good is this organization where they, I think I, told, as I mentioned it earlier, but I'll just explain a bit more. They are a charitable organization based in the States, and they are working with, um, what's that, your siblings, if I'm not mistaken, to build a project in uh, Uganda for uh, an orphanage for the children there. It's a self-sustaining orf- orphanage. They're going to build a chicken farm and build an orphanage next to it so that they, t- they can take care of themselves. And they're harnessing the power of the Brony community through doing music and uh, things like that to be able to um, land this project. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. 
So that's it for the shout out. If you would like to contact us, if you have any questions, concerns, suggestions, complaints, or anything you want to say about our show, you can contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com. Yes, we accept anything. If you can stuff ponies into your email, just do it. And you can reach us on Twitter as well. Our Twitter account is at the MBS show. Mine is at St. Pinky, S T P I N K I E. And I am at Norman Sanzo. I'm at uh, Alpha underscore Brony. And you can reach me at Five Iron Brony, all one word. And also, you can also contact our friend. He's Drexy, D R C X Y. Go at him. He needs also more Twitter followers. Yeah. And also, please subscribe to us, rate us, and say good things about us on iTunes and like our Facebook page as well. You can find all these links right there in our show notes. So, Philip, thank you very much for being on. Uh, you're welcome. I really had fun. Right. Okay, Great that's to good hear to know. that. So, um, thank you very much, everyone, for listening in this week. And um, so, I've been Daniel Anthony. I've been Norman Sanzo. I'm Alpha Brony. And I'm Philip Dollingai. And I'm Five. And we will see you next week. See ya. Peace. Bye. Pony on. It's so lonely on the moon. I hope that I can come home soon. Will it be the same?
can come home soon. Me too. For a coming sunset, I will yearn. The longest day will end, and I will return. Norman, why don't you let us know where it's going to be? Well, this um, sorry, the meetup. We're going to hold it at the Curve at Kuala Lumpur at 12 p.m. Come and join us and get a chance to meet us, the hosts. Uh, sorry, sorry, Norman. Curve isn't in Kuala Lumpur. Where is it then? Mutiara Damansara. It's off because if you say Kuala Lumpur, people think Bukit Bintang. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all the same to me. Yeah, I know. It's uh, I don't live in Kuala Lumpur, but I say I do. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think I should um, continue on and leave that for an outtake. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. Three, two, one.